Holy cow, holy cow, holy cow. Welcome back. Welcome back to Prepper Talk Radio. I'm talking to you, Scott. Welcome back. I know, but uh, I'm talking to the listeners. They've been gone for a whole week. I've been gone for two weeks. This is weird. I hate not being here. I'm so glad to be back. I, uh... Both weeks, I was stuck on an airplane or stuck in a uh, in a. But you went to a wonder- beautiful place, right? And I was sick the whole time. Dang it! When you work too much, and your body finally has the time to relax, <laughs> it says, "Oh, <laughs> I can get sick now." All the poisons come and out. Everything hits, and you're just like, "Bleh." Yeah, that's so, bad. well, that what does that tell now you? Now I'm slowing down. I'm going to be a little a little smarter about how I spend my time. Man, what, our intro what, music is still going. Yeah. I'm going to turn that down. So, what does that tell you, Scott? What does that tell you about? Going off and on vacation, and what's what did you're you You're probably learn? telling me that I need to respond by saying, <laughs> Don't go on vacation. Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Anyways, we've got a good show for you today. Uh, as a reminder, we are brought to you by Survival Medical, they're down in Provo right now, um, and they are at Sam's Club. Survival Medical is the only first aid kit that's actually going to last you 20 years. Are they in South Jordan now? They are also in South Jordan at Sam's Club. So okay. check them out or go to survival-medical.com. They're our, our sponsor. We love these guys. That's what I carry in my truck. That's what I carry in my car. That's what I carry in my house. That's what I stash with all the rest of my food storage. Yep. I've got a, a Bravo bucket well, and a couple other buckets right next to my food storage bucket. So we're good. Complimented perfectly. So also check out ktalkmedia.com, the new website. It is up. It is launched. It is awesome. We are always adding content to it, and you can listen to our show archives. Mm -hmm. So check those out, and any of the other show archives are there as well. So tune in and have fun with that. Today's going to be fun. We're taking a little different spin. We're going to talk about apps for prepping. Mm -hmm. Um, And one of those is is GigMe. They came to PrepperCon last year. We've got the founder and CEO, Brian Packer, here with us in studio. How you doing, Brian? Hello, Scott. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> Thank so you. You guys have been working on this project for a while. Um, been through a few revisions. It's pretty dang sweet. Well, thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah, we've been uh, we've been trying to make this a a uh, the the mantra behind GigMe. A yeah, what bit is GigMe? I mean, what is, what is it? GigMe is gig my inventory. Uh, okay. uh, digitize. Uh, uh, give it give it something. Um, make it digital so that you can you can manage it and you can understand it and part of what we what we started with is the concept of keeping it simple you know the sort of what is essential what is what is really needed and what isn't and and from that kind of beginnings we created a uh, an app to help you understand what you've got and and what what is unnecessary and the first app that we had was was probably a little bit um complicated uh, because we found that a lot of people had a harder time uh, enjoying using. We found, you know, the, the concept of keeping it simple, mm-hmm. stupid is uh, yeah. is good in an app, too. So when you you were saying that uh, it helps you keep inventory of things that aren't, are, are unnecessary, you no, use no. that word unnecessary uh, or maybe you know, unessential, uh, I was wondering what you were meaning exactly by, by that. I, I know we all have stuff that's that we don't need. That is just takes up space. Is that kind of what you're where you're leaning towards? Well, part of it is just trying to help you understand what. Originally, it was trying to help you d- identify what you have that you don't need, and okay. just to get rid of it. Okay. Now it's more really about simply storing what you have that is worth taking the time to store. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, it's amazing how much money we in America spend on yeah. storing oh, stuff that isn't worth storing. But this oh, yeah. is specifically about yeah. storing and, and knowing what you've got. If it's important enough for you to manage and store it, then you probably should have some way of knowing what it is, where mm-hmm. it is, and how much of it you've got, i.e., you know, yep. uh, well, little propane tanks or yeah, whatever absolutely. it is. So, like, like you know, all of us have had these storage units in the past, and there's all kinds of storage unit places all over the Wasatch Front. And Sadly, we, sp- this is true. we spend fifty bucks, hundred bucks a month just storing stuff Who there. That fifty bucks. It's like a hundred to hundred and fifty okay. bucks. Uh, it was been a long time since I've been had a while for you. His I've was closet one. sized. I know. Like <laughs> it was a closet one. size okay. now is like sixty bucks. Okay, it's so ridiculous. I haven't even looked lately. So why I'd do we even store those things? Exactly. By point, and you don't you don't end up going there, but once every six months, right? And you're spending all this money yeah, to that. store this stuff. You don't even know what's in there. It's actually, uh, surprisingly, it's, it's, a, it's a massive industry. I mean, people are spending billions of dollars on storing stuff that they really don't even use or need or 
frankly, they don't even know what it is they've got in there anymore. They've long since forgotten. Oh, so yeah. knowing what you have, that pa- knowledge is, is such a great power. I mean, that's actually, I mean, that's really a big piece of what's behind PrepperCon is you guys mm-hmm. are, are trying to give people the knowledge of understanding. Knowledge is power. Knowledge in this particular situation of knowing what it is you actually have. First step, if you know what you've got, now you can make the determination of, do I really need this? Mm-hmm. Do I mm-hmm. really want to? Because even storing it in your house, there's a cost to that. Yep. Yeah, yeah. What a, there's a, there's an opportunity cost. What else could I have in my garage if I didn't have all of this stuff in yeah. my garage? Maybe I could actually park a car in there so that I didn't have to scrape the <laughs> windows. You're every talking morning. about my garage, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. You've yes. seen my garage. <laughs> well, my garage isn't too far off right now. I, we're still in the renovation phase, so I've got like saws and everything yeah. else all so, over my garage. So I hope but. this is becoming evident to you why we're talking about this, why us preppers are talking about this particular app and how it can be helpful to the, the everyday prepper. Well, what's funny is, is as, as I started using the new version, um, m- instinctively I ran to my ammo boxes. <laughs> and I'm like, inventory control. And I'm like, okay, I have 100 of those. Click, 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 boom. No, and I took a picture, mm-hmm. set the amount. And then it allows me to tell you where it is. So now I can remember, okay, mm-hmm. oh, I need my 12 gauge. Oh, that's in box five mm-hmm. in the basement over here. Good. Oh, I need my 308. That's true. You know, or I need my 300 wind mag. You know, I'm like, boom. Oh, that's in the, ma- the master bedroom closet. Why? I don't know. I, I, like, I like my hunting ammo in my bedroom. Because I you don't, don't want all your eggs in one basket. Well, that's why. If I look out my window, there's deer in my neighbor's yard every day. That reminds you of But your I don't ammo? have a 300 wind mag to shoot those. I just happen to have the ammo. Um, <laughs> but no, I, I, I just instinctively just started taking pictures. It's so, it's so easy. It's very instinctive. Um, and the thing that I love is, is, Brian, you even brought up the point that you can inventory your food storage and put them in bins or your first aid and put it in bins. And I love the concept of bins. And a lot of the preppers I talk to use bin storage solutions. And they'll take all these items, like items, put them in a bin, and then they'll have a master sheet somewhere. Mm-hmm. Of what's in those bins, but if you don't, if you're like me and you don't control that master sheet, my wife does. You have to get in touch with. I have to find my wife. Where's your master sheet? She'll pull it out of her filing solution, and then I can look through it and see, okay, what's in what box? Or I could use GeekMe and I can put it all in there, and I can share that same login with my wife, and we just go and scan the box. Oh, that's what's in that box. Oh, that's what's in that box. You got the QR codes. Right. Yeah. So the part of the part of the app is you are able to, as you've snapped, simply, basically, the, the app is this. You, you snap pictures of items, the, you assign them to a container, which can be a tote, a box. Um, it can be your freezer. A it can be a closet. Oh, yeah. It can be anything that you want to have be the container. If you then want to label that container so that you know what is in that, so let's say it's a tote. Um, I, I'm going to use a, a non-prepper example just because it's kind of yep. timely. My wife does this. So this is that holiday time of oh, season yeah. where women are are, are taking totes that, um, that they use once a year to put, whether it's Halloween or Thanksgiving or Christmas or whatever decoration, they put those decorations up. And then when you're done, then they put that all back into whatever totes. And then, you, you know, your job is usually as the guy to, to go and find these things in the, in the garage mm-hmm. and know which one <laughs> has so the, um, honey, we, get, we need the tree stand, uh, which Christmas tote, which of our 40 Christmas totes <laughs> has the tree stand anyway. Yeah. So really one cool thing is, so you, you snap pictures of your items, you assign them to a tote you can print a label that has a qr code on that and assign it to those items so now with your smartphone you can actually when i'm looking for the the christmas tree stand i can scan the christmas totes and i can go oh yeah it's it's christmas tote 23 that has the the Mm -hmm. the christmas tree stand in it i can pull that out and i can open it and boom i found what i what i need and so the concept of being able to know exactly specifically what's in what tote and having that organized is is part of what we've done here is to create make that easier make that make that a simpler thing in life i just had an aha moment too mm-hmm. now i can actually if my wife says go put this away i can go i have no idea well most of the time i'm like i have no idea where this goes i'm like where do you want this instead of having to do that and her having to explain okay now i need you to go over here put it in this box not that box this box I can just type it in and be like, oh, that goes in this box, it goes in the garage, or that goes in this box or bin or whatever. Mm-hmm. The tree gets stacked inside of another box that gets shoved inside the attic. Great. I know now I now know where it goes, and my wife won't have to tell me every time. <laughs> See, there you that's go. A, that's a good aha moment. That's a good <laughs> it's a relationship. <laughs> so how do people a relationship saver, yes. Yeah, how do people get the app? 
Okay, it's free. Um, it is available on both Android and Apple, iOS. Uh, and so you just simply search for GigMe. GigMe is spelled G-I-G-M-I. Um, so search for GigMe, G-I-G-M-I, on either one of the app stores, either the Android app store or the um, iTunes, um, and download it. It's, it's free. We are just simply... Um, uh, building users, uh, there is um, no cost for using it now or in the future at this point. It, it just, just simply use it. We, we do know there are. There's going to be. We're in the early stages still, so please be patient with us. If you f run across some little funky bug, just let us know on our Facebook page. Um, and and we're just looking for early users to use this. But because it's it's something that is free and easy to use, we're hoping that it's uh, well worth your time to. To download cool. this and start playing with it. Now I've got cool. a, a couple of questions for you, unless you had some, Scott. Go ahead. Well, um, my the the main thing that I see I would use it for. First of all, the the, the most apparent reason is for me is for home insurance, homeowners insurance, to be able to catalog everything that's in my house, put it in a, in a container. Here's my house. Here's my homeowners insurance. If there's a disaster, have an emergency, a flood, or something like that, I can document easily document. Okay, here are the things in my home that will need to be replaced from my homeowner's insurance. That's actually brilliant because that's one of the biggest things people forget when they have, whether it's an apartment you're renting or in your home, if something gets damaged uh, and the box is so bad, it's like, do we even try to open it and try to salvage anything that's or in there? I, do they I just had a toss list. the whole thing out? I had a list of things, but that list got damaged. So I don't even know. Yeah. What, so what, that's, that's, what that's what a great point. Anymore. I mean, insurance agents, you guys need to get all over this. Get all your clients on it. It'll save them and save you a ton of time and, and headache. Um, what's the security like in the in the platform? Yeah, that was my one of my questions. So questions it too. is. Um, we, we we have it on secure servers. You have a password and a username, your own username and password to to use it. We know. I think the most important thing to understand from a security standpoint is this: people hack what they feel is is worth them hacking. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, can somebody hack this? Certainly, because if somebody can hack the U.S. government multiple times every single day and they've got teams right. of people working to keep it secure then people could hack this if they wanted to so we use um, security with this but the reality is is that there's no address attached to this so when you are mm -hmm. documenting I've got this in my basement they, you have a username which is whatever you want to whatever create you want and your password which is you have not attached this to some physical address physical even location. if they did hack this they're not going to know where mm -hmm. this ammunition or this, exactly. this whatever it is they're not going to there's no connection of those things I'd so have to either list it in there this is located at you know yeah if you right, list your right. address in the app then yes then that that point <laughs> that would be the case but um it, as you know and i suppose you could as a location you could put an address in there but that would that would be most people just say this is my barn or my storage unit right. or my shed gotcha. um, and in that way it's darn near impossible for somebody to really be able to hack this and get usable mm -hmm information from that standpoint awesome we got a couple callers let's see if we can take one of these callers hey thanks for calling k talk you're on the air talking about the uh, gig me app do you have any questions for brian on the gig me app what the heck's that <laughs> on the it's, what we're, it's what we're talking about it's today our, our conversation point for the next 20 minutes did you have a question or something else you wanted to talk about yeah I, you know what's a gig me app i don't know what it is that's well, what we're talking about yeah. stay tuned in we're talking to Brian. He's the founder and CEO of GigMe. It's an app that actually simplifies tracking and storing all of your, your items, whether it's food, clothes, sporting equipment, whatever. It could be anything, but it simplifies that whole process. Yeah, we're trying so. to ap apply this as preppers, how we can use this as preppers to, to further simplify our, our lives as prepper, preppers. What is an app? I, I, you <laughs> know, I'm 62. I... I, I ask everybody and nobody can tell me even the kids that know what it is they can't tell me my grandkids they can't <laughs> tell me I'm a, what is an app an and app like, is simply a program thing. on your phone thanks for your call an app is simply a program on oh, your phone I so that you can oh I just cut off this that back how sweet it is that's how I get cut off from them too <laughs> <laughs> well, well the hell with you stay tuned in thanks for your call <laughs> <laughs> hey, thanks for calling K-Talk. You're on the air. Do you have questions about the GigMe app? Um, no. What I was going to say is I was listening to your comment when I got in the car and it was talking about being prepared, knowing where everything is in your mm -hmm. home. Well, well, we live in Springville, and right behind our, or right across the street from us, there's hills. 
and teenage kids set it on fire a couple of years ago. Mm. So we all grabbed our cameras and our phones and started recording all of our furnishings, the architecture of the home and everything. And it was great. We had everything in case, you know, Perfect. the fire got away from them. Awesome. So anyway, thank that's you. an idea. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank Appreciate you. We're running into a break, but thank you so much for your call. You bet. Hey, guys. Thanks for tuning in. We're going to be right back after this break. PrepperCon or Prepper Talk Radio. Messed up again. Prepper Talk Radio is brought to you by survival-medical.com. Check them out at Sam's Club. The all-new K-Talk. Hey, thanks for tuning in to K-Talk Radio. That's ktalkmedia.com is our new website. And you're listening to Prepper Talk Radio, sponsored by Survival Medical. The only first aid kits tougher than nature. You can get them over at Sam's Club right now, down in South Jordan, and uh, for a little bit longer down in uh, Provo. Provo. So, uh, awesome, awesome show today. We've actually got founder and CEO Brian Packer with GigMe, G-I-G-M-I, um, we had a call over the over the break asking where they could find more information. What's the website? It is g i g m i dot com. So gigme dot com. You can find us there, and we've got links there for uh, both uh, the Android and the um, iTunes um, app stores. So you can download it from there. And this is seriously an awesome little app. You can you can take pictures. You can tag it. You can tell it, tell it the app where things are going to be, and then you can even print out labels with QR codes, so you can go back and find it super fast. You're like, here's here's the use I just thought. Okay. Um, recipes, visual recipes or visual instructions. You know, guys, we like pictures, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, okay, how to clean your AR-15? Here's the first step: take it apart, pull the pins here. Here's the second step: pull the you know the bolt out and so forth. So, I guess you could do something like that and have. And share that through your family or whatever. Like, like my daughter called me yesterday. How do I make maple syrup? Well, it's right on the bottle. <laughs> you know, it's <laughs> pretty easy to make. But uh, <laughs> how about a series of pictures to show? Here, boil the water. No, the, I was just thinking out loud here. So, and you know, the interesting thing is, is that we've we've created a. There's a lot of flexibility built into this app. Mm-hmm. So if you get creative, there's a lot of things you could do that are not necessarily within the. So the, the confines of, of, of our vision. So, I, yeah, mm-hmm. I'm totally mm-hmm. curious to see various different ways people use GigMe to yeah. to make their life easier, to prep, to you know prepare for insurance circumstances, to do whatever. There's there's so many different possible use cases. Would love to hear from people who are figuring yeah. out new ways to. Now, now I I see. For me, uh, I would use this, um, and and I have a few questions for you. Of course, security is a concern for me. Um, you know, will I post my firearms on there and all my ammo? And like, but like you say, there's no particular location. Yes. But it's nice. Uh, you know, I'm I'm constantly going back, okay, and recounting my inventory of you know precious metals and and ammo and so forth. And I can see how this would be a, a useful tool as long as I feel it's safe. Yeah. And again, um, but yeah, like you say, no no location. There no is address. no such thing as as a perfectly safe internet situation. But mm-hmm. we. Um, if the information that they glean from it is not usable for them, mm-hmm. um, then then it makes it very difficult for that to be worthwhile, and and that's the reason why we didn't include any address, any any mm-hmm. I mean, any geo marking or geo mark. Yeah, like there's that. nothing okay, so like there's that. No so kind of geo tagging or anything like we that. We haven't done location. anything like that. We're okay. not asking location. Your app is not asking location mm-hmm. within the system. There's nothing like that. Okay. Um, so. That's part of the reason why we've done that. Yeah, no, I think that's that's uh, that's ideal because I would definitely want to use this more to keep track of my stuff because, you know, as preppers, we have a lot of stuff, and we need to watch our budgets. And like you say, I've got stuff in the attic like crazy that we need to get rid of. And, you know, I can I can inventory that, and then we can take that. And, and is there a way to interface that and with, a, with like, a KSL online or something and be able to hook it up with the classifieds or, or uh, Craigslist or something like that and then just... Yeah. Yeah. And then Craig, yeah, and exactly, exactly. Um, at this point, no other than just exporting the picture that you've already right. taken and, 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 and pushing it to that. Yeah, okay. it's, um, we have not, not built, built an automatic, automatic uh, uh, interface. Yeah. 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 Now, we just, I had a caller on that, uh, that just left. He had a really good question. He said, uh, one of the problems that he has with apps is that the apps inherently aren't that secure because it has access to your pictures and your other files on your, on your phone. Mm-hmm. Are there intrusion issues with your app that uh, no, I was off the whole time? Okay, so we had a caller. 
Thank you, Shane. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all excited and talking. I did over this here last nobody, week. I did this last me. week. So, you know what's funny is that's a lot like my life. I'll be talking a lot and no one's listening. Nobody's listening. So yeah. <laughs> this time I just had the mic off. <laughs> me too. Um, no, so we had a caller. Great question that he had was, you know, with his current apps on his on his phone, he's always concerned um, that they can access his photos or access files. Now, is are there any limitations on this, or is it thing something you have to choose what it sees? Uh, as far as okay so when you are taking a picture you are choosing the picture that it's going to it only is accessing the picture live it actually d doesn't um we don't currently have it choosing from your picture files on your device gotcha. um, and nobody there is no um uh, from a security standpoint there's no uh it is not sharing um on a database standpoint it is not sharing anywhere um the the pictures from your device to gig me mm -hmm. um it is only on a one by one basis the one that you are taking mm -hmm. that you are now choosing to have be assigned to gig me it is that's the only one that it's pulling okay great so that that does uh, offer a little more security that way so thank you and caller if you had any more questions on that feel free to call back in we've got brian here for the next uh, probably 15 minutes um this is awesome i i love tools that simplify my life right everybody does if I'm going to be gardening, gardening, I love having the right tools to garden with. I don't want to have, you know, a big giant tractor if I'm only doing a small garden. I do. Whatever makes sense. <laughs> I know, but Shane, you don't make sense. <laughs> whatever makes sense well, and whatever you. simplifies my life, that's what you want to have. <laughs> and I was being facetious. I'm really no, nice so to Shane I. all the time. So was I. Except for on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> so with GigMe, um, I mean, it, it's it's gone over some some revisions. It's It's pretty simple to use. Who, who's using it the most right now that you've seen? So interestingly enough, uh, the the one interesting, so when we redesigned it, we, we redesigned it with young moms in mind because they, they were the heaviest users of our first um, release. And so some of the things, for example, that they used it for, um, if you're a young mom, I, I, nobody I think in the existence has more stuff that they're having to try to track than a young mom. Think about it. They've got um, clothes for three to six month old boy for summer, fall, winter, you know, and then they have the, the same boys clothes for six to nine months and, then, mm -hmm. then, and yeah. then they have girl clothes for the various different seasons and then they have their own clothes for when they're three months pregnant, when they're nine months pregnant, when they're mm -hmm. not pregnant, when they're recovering from being pregnant. So you think about all, and then the toys for the various different ages and the, and the groups and, and the boy versus the girl. And the, and you think about all of that stuff that they're trying to manage, organize, and they do an amazing job with that. But this was really designed largely around making that job so much easier for them. So, you know, now you can have that tote of, of um, three to six month old boy clothes for summer and mm -hmm. you know what's in there. Because often, I, mean, I don't know, my wife did this. She would say, ah. Oh, I swear we had some little red shoes. Where are those little red shoes? You know, and, <laughs> and you, you try to figure out, okay, yep, did yep. they end up in the right box or wh where are those? And, and, it's and you end up buying another pair because, exactly. and then you find that later on. Yeah. It, yeah, absolutely. Same, same with thing with preppers. You know, yes, it's good to have redundant one or two or even three of each. But when it comes down to managing your budget, you say, you know, I know I had this somewhere. I really don't, can't afford to go buy another one, but I need it. Yep. Yeah. I can see how this would be very... Well, Very good for for a lot of us preppers. Well, what's funny is most most of like our inventory, it's tracked by my wife. I'll be honest. Yeah. I'll go get stuff, and I'll look at the list and see what needs to be gotten, and I'll go get more. She gets the majority of it once we've once we identified our full plan and everything we needed. She's been the go getter and the organizer, right? That's that's her wheelhouse. Mm -hmm. So moms are going to be drawn to this. Wives, and then men who like to be organized. Um, are going to be drawn to this. I like it, even though I'm not that organized. It's simple. So for me, the things that I want to track, I can track really easily. Um, but yeah, like my fat clothes in one <laughs> tiny box. Well, actually, they're in my drawer right now. My my <laughs> not so fat clothes. Those are in a box. And those wish I could get skinny again clothes. Those are in a bin in the garage, right? Some guys have that. Some guys start away. But women have that. You know, and they, they dream of their high school days where they can get back into that one outfit. That's probably stored somewhere. Yeah. This is perfect. I could yeah. snap a picture, put it in a bin, throw a QR code on there, forget about it. You know, and then when they lift up those weights and they're getting skinny or whatever they want to do, 
boom, there it is. Instead well, of opening the box, you just scan the QR code and absolutely. it tells you what's in there. Cool. I'm going to throw another example. This is a use case that one of the first things I started using it for in, in my house, um, and that's for batteries. I don't know about the rest oh, of you. Yeah. I, I buy batteries in bulk, oh, yeah. um, and I always have lots of them. But then, believe it or not, despite the fact that I've I bought them in bulk, they, the the ones that I need are the ones that disappear. And next thing you know, you you're you're out of the triple A's, um, and and it's sort of a, an emergency or for whatever reason. You've got yep. 12, 14 year old boys who are wanting to have an Xbox thing, and and the, the remote controls you know are dead. But the 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 concept is you can put. You can create a, uh, a small container of, of all your AAA batteries, and you can manage plus and minus quantities as you're, as you're pulling them out or adding them to. So oh, I, that's cool. another little issue that the app I has, that. Yeah. is that as you put something into a container, you can create quantities, and then you can plus and minus that as you, as you add to or take away from that. So it's really kind of cool. Think of that with little propane canisters yeah. or batteries or ammo or whatever. So is there ability to put a, an alarm on that? So, okay, I'm low. It's going to notify me that I'm low on batteries or propane or whatever it might be. That is on the wish list. Okay, cool. Um, and so <laughs> things like that, and I just bring that up. If, if there are other things on the wish list, please yeah. please let us know. P comment on our Facebook page and uh, cool. let us Kinda know. Kind of like your own personal point of sale system. Yes. Reorder system. We got another caller. <laughs> wow. <laughs> coughing here. We got another caller. Hold on. Hey, caller, thanks for calling. Okay, talk. You're on the air. Do you have questions on this Gig Me app? Yes. Uh, I just tried to pull it up on my uh, Android and got some... Uh, Gig me uh, events finder in Vladivostok, Russia. So it's G I G M I. Is that the spelling that you're using? G M G M I. Okay, I put M E. G I G. All right. And the other question is, in the event of a grid down situation, uh, EMP, um, are we SOL or is there uh, some kind of a hard copy management? Yeah, uh, is there a way to print this out on some kind of hard copy? Yeah, and that is a that is a great request. Um, we we are looking into doing something along that, those lines. We don't with this version of the app right now today. Um, that is not available, but that is something that we're looking at adding in the future. So um, technically, you could you could you could go on your desktop and you could print. The various different some some of this yourself just from the web pages because by the way this has a desktop version as well oh, so you okay. can oh, log okay. in on your desktop and you can you can um, manage, uh, manage this on okay. your desktop as well which makes it a little bit easier from a keyboarding standpoint but uh, so you could actually print pages that way but we are looking into the concept of being able to export this to say a, a spreadsheet or something so that you'd be able to to create lists for that purpose cool so get all your friends yeah, to request you. the same thing thank the you. more people we have requesting that. The, the sooner Brian's forced to do it. So you're on you're on my team. We like this. Thanks right. so much for your yeah, call. For the call. Yeah, I think I, I think it's going to have a lot of different uses, um, both inside the world of prepping and outside the world of prepping for me. Like the biggest thing, whether you're a prepper or not, most people in Utah have either a Boy Scout or an athlete or someone in cheer or dance, mm -hmm. and you've got all this stuff, and you don't always know where it is. But there's different seasons for different sports, or like with your camping gear, since that's close and closer to me because I, I'm a, an assistant scout. You're master. not a dancer. You haven't taken I'm not dance a, lessons. I'm not a tiny dancer. No, <laughs> um, I'm like I'm like in Fantasia, those big giant dancing hippos. That would be me <laughs> if I were a dancer. But camping gear. He's like, exaggerating. I'm always trying to figure out where that stupid thing went. Yep, no, Wh you're right. One thing or another is always somehow. In the wrong bin. Now, what if you lend one of your items to your best buddy? That is something that uh, it's a, that is a great aspect. We had that in our first app of a way to track what you've lent and, and when it's due back. Mm -hmm. We pulled that back out as we simplified this this mm -hmm. version that we've got right now. But that's probably going to be one of the things that's coming back. In fact, it's already on our list because we've already had a few people request. Because tracking what you've lent to somebody yeah. and who's got it is definitely something I want to see back in there. But we created a... Again, this version is mm. extremely Very simplified to start helping people just start to organize their stuff. Because yeah. I can tell you, I would use that all the time. Because I can't tell you all the things I have lent out and have never seen them again. All yeah. of your and I forget. Tools in the garage. Tools or whatever. My videos, I mean, whatever it might be. DVDs. And I never see it again. Yeah, DVDs You know, my Betamax version of Goonies is gone. You still haven't seen that. <laughs> you know, my, all my VCR tapes, you know, I need to catalog those things. Right. Because they're awesome. in high demand. <laughs> well, actually, when we bought our house, there was a huge, giant pile of VHS tapes in the in this mm -hmm. closet in the basement, 
and there was probably a hundred VHS tapes and a broken VHS player. And I'm like, I don't have a VHS player. And I'm looking through all of these and some of them are decent, but there's like three or four versions of the same movie. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, why didn't they just you know, put it whenever on I find me so they knew that they had that movie? They can yeah, get rid of the other one, right? Yeah. There whenever I find there a VHS player, I keep it because you can't. You can, I don't know if you can even buy them anymore. You probably can find you them can. Like on, They're like on Amazon or something. Thirty-five bucks. Occasionally, Walmart will have them. But someday they but it's won't always be around. A DVD and VHS player, right. yeah. and they're like the cheapest, lowest end, yeah, worst check. grade. But hey, they work for a little while, so I'll buy a couple work. of them. Yeah, that's <laughs> funny. So We've got just a few minutes left before this. This we go into break. Um what other key points should we be aware of, should listeners be aware of about the Gig Me app, Brian? I think one of the things, to, uh, again, I understand the, the security. I would, uh, I would reiterate something that is um, more from a, um, if there is something you're truly concerned about, don't put it in the app. Um, if otherwise, there's a whole bunch of things that are not, yeah, not, not something not you'd be that worried yeah. about. Mm-hmm. Use it for that. Start getting comfortable with it. And then and they move from there. So one, yep, good point. as with everything, uh, how do you eat an elephant? Well, one bite at a time. Um, that's how you're going to get your life organized. That's how you're going to start to know what your stuff is, where it's at. Start with something. Uh, tis the season. Halloween stuff is out. Mm-hmm. Organize that as you put it back into the bins. Then point. the next step is, you know, as your Thanksgiving stuff comes out on Christmas. And then start on your ammunition boxes. Uh, start on on. Find some place to start. Uh, that's I, I think that's the biggest thing that I would say is the best way to get organized and prepared is to take one step. Perfect. Perfect. Hey, Brian, thanks so much for being on with us. You guys are listening to Prepper Talk Radio on K Talk AM 630, brought to you by Survival Medical. We'll be right back after a short break and message from all of our other sponsors that are almost as cool at survival-medical.com. Amen. Hey, we're back. Thanks for tuning in to K Talk Radio. You're listening to Prepper Talk Radio, and uh, we had some fun talking about Gig Me with the founder Brian. They were at PrepperCon this last year, and it's a great little app. What we want to talk about the rest of the show: other apps that can help prepping. Yeah, a couple other things as well. So, as a reminder, man, I'm breathing hard because I just ran back in here from the parking lot. <laughs> I'm out of shape. Well, you shouldn't be leaving the studio there, Scott. I know. I shouldn't be. Some, so, first of all, we want to thank our, our sponsor, survival-medical.com. Tougher than nature. Available at selected Sam's Clubs right now or online at survival-medical.com. But check out the South Jordan Sam's Club right now. They're, they're down there. Um, you can see them, feel them. Find out for yourself how good it is. They have a video loop that's going on that explains how good these kits are. And I think the, the biggest feature on these is that they are meant for long-term storage. And that's, for me, as uh, I'm not going to call myself a medical professional whatsoever, but for, as former EMT, I can really appreciate uh, that your medical supplies, they degrade over time. And to not just throw that money away every you know couple of years and have to get new stuff, this is, it's re- really is revolutionary to this industry. Well, the nice thing is you can open it, use it, and cl- reseal it, and it'll still last. Yep. It's not going to just degrade and fall apart. Yeah, absolutely. So, so, yeah, what else do you want to talk about today, apps. Scott? I've got, I've got four apps that I, I keep on my phone. I've actually got six apps in here that, that I like to talk about, but um, two of them are survival guides. Um, it's the same survival guide, but it's in two different formats. Okay, um, You can download those for free, uh, the Google Play Store or the, or the App Store um, for, for iPhone. But the survival guide apps, and we'll post these later in a, in a blog post along with the links to, to where you can download all these. But it's got everything on the psychology of survival to shelters to water procurement, um, firecraft, you know, understanding how and where to put a fire. There's safe places and there's not so safe places. So which app is this, Scott? This, this is, is a survival just guide. It's called survival guides. That one yep. there? So the top one okay. that you just pulled cool. up, that's one of them. All right, I'm going to um, download this one. Survival guide. Okay, cool. Um, then there's another one called Survival Guide Book, which is the same thing. But both of them, one's a PDF inside of an app, and the other one's mm-hmm. just a standard um, digital display. But they're great because it kind of shows you, hey, how do, I, how do I take care of this situation? Right? How do I prepare for that? How do I prepare for this? Um, and I like that because I like Survival Guide Books. Um, that's a great place if you're new to prepping or if you're new to wilderness survival. Best place to start, handbooks. Like, mm-hmm. for example, the, the old military uh, army handbook, 
survival guide for the 1970s. So yeah, this so this is U.S. Military Survival Manual. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. And they've digitized that into this app, so it's great because now you can look and, and it has pictures of different types of plants, drawings of different types of shelters, how to build them, how to put them together. Desert survival, tropical survival, cold weather survival, sea survival. Very cool. Now the trick is is to be studying this Rope and science. not to open it up when you're in a scenario where you may not have connection or you may have lost your battery, you know, start studying now. That's the point I want to make with these apps. Um, other apps that I think are kind of fun and really helpful is there's there's some first aid apps. Um, the Red Cross has a lot of good ones, but the problem that I have with the Red Cross ones is they're, they're very light on information. Mm-hmm. Um, almost every one of the Red Cross apps that, that's out there, it's a really good starting point, a launch board, if you will, and then it dies off in information. For example, you can open up the the first cross, uh, the Red Cross first aid one, and it's got things like allergies, asthma attacks, bleeding, broken bones, burns, choking, diabetic distress, heart attack, heat stroke. For example, I'll click on heat stroke. F- number one, if the person's skin may be hot, wet, or dry, you know they may be also experiencing changes in mental status as well as vomiting and high body temperature. So just generic information overall. Then it says call nine one one as soon as possible. Okay. Okay. <laughs> what else should we do? You know, and they've got other things after that, but mm-hmm. they're all very, very vague. And every single one of these, you know, let's go to distress. You know, that's one of the few ones that doesn't say go call 911, but it does give you um, an FAQ that helps you understand a little bit more about it. Here's the one I love, though. And you can download this from, it's called the Know It All First Aid Refresher. And it's an orange and green and, and white. Um, it's a white plus with a green background, but it gives you first measures and emergency call. It gives you, um, and that's where you can put people in there like, hey, if something happens to me, contact so-and-so. Okay, cool. So it's an ice app, mm-hmm. so in case of mm-hmm. emergency. Um, but it also gives you all of the little things that you need to know in case of an emergency. So, like, <coughs> let me pull one up. Give me a scenario. Uh well, so many scenarios running through my head. My friend, you come across a car wreck. I mean, that's the first one that comes to my head. Okay, so let's just say you, get, you come across a car wreck and the person's not breathing. Sure. Right. Yeah. They can't be woken. They're they're so unconscious. It has you know not breathing or cannot be woken. You know, tells you kind of what to do. Lay the person in the recovery position, lateral recumbent position. Mm-hmm. Carry out the four basic life support measures. And then, like you say, you should study these beforehand so that study when you come across before. that. This that's why this is called a refresher. It's to help you remember what you're supposed to be doing, kind of practice what you're supposed to be doing so that you're ready. Cool. Um, things about, like, abdominal issues. Um, and there's so many different things in there. And that one's supported by advertisements, which is lame. But it's great because it's a quick reference. Whenever you've got downtime, I love it because you can just turn to it. Right. Instead of going to Facebook, jump on your apps and do some learning. Absolutely. Um, another couple of ones are the, uh, the uh, SAS Survival Guide. Um, it's a little bit more in depth, um, and it's by Johnny Loft Wiseman. It's a bigger graphical display of the survival guide books, um, and it's got some more of the uh, the, the British SAS okay, so content. <coughs> some more of the survival orienta- oriented mm-hmm. training rather than just emergency uh, medical and so forth. But That's here's cool. the cool thing. It has checklists. Uh, I love checklists. Checklists for your survival kit, survival pouch, and a medical kit. So your survival kit, things to put in there, matches, candle, flint, needles and thread, fish hooks and line, compass, snare wire, flexible saw, water sterilization tablets. I mean, the list goes on and on. And it's not a huge list, but, I mean, it's got things like waterproof tape. And you're like, well, where's my first aid? Well, you've got a first aid medical kit that they're saying, get these items. And you can check things off, and it saves those. You can also share it on your Facebook page if you want people to know what your preps are, which I don't recommend. Yeah. But it's, it's another little tool you can use to keep track of what you have and where to start. We need the Prepper Talk radio app there, Scott. So the Prepper Talk radio app, <laughs> we don't have one of those yet. But we do have Prepped. Yes. Now, Prepped is fun because it's it's a mix between social media and a blog. Mm-hmm. Um, or a, uh, I do like this app a lot. This is, uh, this is awesome. This one uh, was actually launched at PrepperCon last year. And you can go to the preppedapp.com and download it. You can use the, lap, the desktop display. But it's great because it mixes, like, Instagram with um, blogging and uh, – what, what's the word I'm looking for well, here? It's kind of Facebooking. 
it's kind of like Facebook, but there's, there's, there's forums. Okay. So you can actually have long discussions and get a lot of really good information from like-minded people. Um, so you've got kind of the mix between a Facebook, an Instagram, and a forums page, and you can use it on your mobile device or on your desktop. And the nice thing about this is you can actually put links that work. Whereas like mm -hmm. Instagram, you can't do links, directed links to websites. This allows you to do that. Cool. Um, we're on there. PrepperCon uh, and Prepper Talk Radio are both on there. Um, really fantastic. Really neat. And the thing that I love the most about it really is is the fact that it's all people who are specifically focused on... Yeah, like-minded on preparedness and Prepping. Such. So yeah, uh, you put my, uh, for example, I posted uh, a while back, put a, a new uh, handguard for my AR-15 that I thought was just really cool. So I put it on here and... and uh, Got a you know got a bunch of comments about it and uh, I think that my intent for using it that way is to sh kind of show people look what's available look at how cool this is mm -hmm. and where where you know this is something I've been looking for for my particular AR-15 for you know for really for years so it it now works the way I want it to work. Well, and what's fun is there's so many different people posting things about bug out vehicles or paracord mm -hmm. or you know fires and you can even do short videos as well. One guy did a little instructional on how to create his own hook. Cool. You know, and I mm -hmm. saw that, and I was like, "Wow!" Tons of people like that and followed that. I mean, and you'll get a lot of neat new followers. There's books that are being being showcased there. Um, it's a fun little app. It's it's the social side of prepping, which really doesn't exist outside of outside of That's true. your small groups, mm -hmm. um, because there's the security issue. Everyone's worried about, okay, well, who gets gets my yeah, information? I don't information. want people knowing about this. Well, this is completely. You can create it up as a completely anonymous. Mm -hmm. Um, just don't post pictures of your face if you don't want people to know who you are or your address, you know. Mm -hmm. But I think it's a great, great tool. And there's so many things. And this is th why we're bringing all this together today. There's so many things out there that can make life simpler um, and give you more free time. You can get lost in social media. You can get lost in books about preparedness. You can get lost in the panic that I need to get all these things ready. The key is not to get lost. The key is to take a break. The key is... Use these systems to simplify what you're doing so that you're not stressed, you're not overwhelmed. Um, you hear a lot of people say, well, I don't want to talk about it because it stresses me out. Mm -hmm. You know, what's your plan in case of a disaster? Oh, well, let the government take care of me. Well, we know that's a failure from the start. If you're thinking, well, I don't want to talk about it because it freaks me out, you have to learn to deal with the tough stuff because if you don't deal with it now, it's going to be about 100 times tougher to deal with the issue if you haven't tried to prepare for it and plan for it. And if maybe you can do it at a bit of a distance with someone across the Internet instead of face-to-face -face where, you know, you have some time to put your thoughts together and, and uh, know exactly, you know, try and figure out what, what you're feeling yourself. I, I do know I do this all the time is that um, I'm constantly trying to figure out exactly you know, especially, you know, what's been happening this last week. And that's one thing I kind of wanted to get in, you know, in the last few minutes if we have time. We do. Uh, if, you know, what's been going on this last week or so that uh, really is, is confusing and concerning and, and who do I talk to and, you know, and, and having a community, you know, kind of like this prep to have and people who are like-minded like who, and, you know, I've got, a, obviously I have a good circle of friends here, Scott and some other uh, friends as well that, uh, when I have a concern, you, they hear from me. They say, you know, I'm concerned about this. What do we do? You know, what's our next step? What's our plan? And so <clears throat> I think that's very important to have that group. If you don't have a group, then, you know, jump on these apps and, and start uh, connecting with people. That's one of the number one things I, I get asked is where do I find other people that, mm -hmm. that are like me? Yeah. Um, it's these forums. You know, these forums. Prepped app is great. It's a growing community. Um, there's other other communities out there like mm -hmm. American Preppers Network, which has a ton of forums. Yep. Um, but it's not mobile friendly yet, and I'm I'm, I'm hounding Hugh to get that mobile friendly because that would be such a great resource. Um, but there are resources out there like our show. There are resources out there, Facebook groups, Facebook pages, um, where you can find other people, like-minded people, and you can relate to them, and you can start building plans. But definitely, first and foremost, make sure you're taking care of your family. Make sure you're taking care of your needs. Mm -hmm. And then you have a plan in case of the basic emergencies. Here's another one I wanted to plug real quick is uh, that I've really gotten to know these guys, uh, the guys over at Ready Man. Oh, yeah. They are all like-minded. They are all, I wouldn't necessarily call them all preppers. They're all, you know, former military, you know, they're all veterans, and they have that same mindset. So they're a really great community to hook up with and have discussions with and uh, really get to know because they do broadcasts every week. 
and they're very informative and and i love love listening to them getting their perspective on it you know us as more particular preppers than former military we all have different mindset and i'd love to hear the different perspectives um and so i I think that's extremely important you know i have my perspective scott has his perspective sometimes they're way different and sometimes they're very much the same. And sometimes very much, yeah, absolutely. But the nice thing is, is we can take those differences and we can utilize them in ways to help each other, and that's the key. Mm-hmm. That is the key to prepping groups. Is is and why we talk about these apps and why we talk about all the different things we talk about each week is, is find people that can help you, um, that can enhance what you're doing. Yeah, I think in this very last minute that we have, what I think I wanted to kind of open up the show with is, are you all aware of what's going on out there, with Russia, with Syria? With with the uh, you know the conflict out there, with the hack on the internet this this last week, uh, with just really all the tension out there, and, I, and I'm sure as you're because you're listening to the station, you probably are aware of those things. But my question is, and what we're all about is, what are you doing about it? Exactly. What, what is what step are you taking to prepare for global thermal nuclear war, for example? As that is a real threat right now, uh, even more so than it ever has been in the history of the world. Uh, and honestly, I'm not terribly concerned about that but there are many other things like like this uh, hacking of the internet what well, are you going to do if if you don't if the banking system gets hacked and you don't have yeah. any cash last week's you know cyber attack was actually a lot of fun for me mm-hmm. um because i got to see a ton of people freak out oh really oh yeah even people in the preparedness industry were like oh dude oh dude oh dude what's happening what's mm-hmm. going on mm-hmm. i can't access my email i couldn't access some of my email but it was funny to see how people responded i was like yeah. Day off. So I started disconnecting from everything. Yeah. It was awesome. Yeah, that's true. So figure out what, just do something. Start to do something and not just worry about it. And that will help increase your confidence. Thank you for listening. Our show, of course, is brought to you by Survival Medical, survival medical.com. The only first aid kits tougher than nature. And we're so grateful for our sponsorship from Survival Medical. And we will catch you guys uh, next week. Absolutely. Same hour. You won't be here, but I will. That's true. I won't Tune be here. in. And uh, make sure you call next week.